So we are doing our first live market talk. Let's discuss about the markets. Few simple uh, protocols we'll, we'll set up right away, guys. Uh, first step is I'm going to share my views about the market. I'm going to take five, first five, ten minutes. I'm going to show you how I, how I personally uh, analyze, first track, understand, analyze, observe the market. So just hear me out for the first five, ten minutes. Where do I see the markets right now, the sectors right now, the stocks right now? And once I'm done, I will be probably showing you a couple of trades which I have done, have recently gone right. And obviously few that have gone backfired and have gone wrong. Okay. So without much ado, let's move ahead. So this is my template. This is the template that I use. Um, not too sure how much technical um, analysis understanding everyone of us in this webinar have, but a simple candlestick chart. I prefer things to be clean. And this thing, you see the three lines that I have over here are the three moving analysis. Quickly, I will just the background noise. Guys, please keep yourself in the news. All right. So what's happening in the market? Now, in this case, I am using the Iris Plus Spider software. I've been using this software since 2004. A pretty neat software, number one. Uh, number two, a quick disclaimer before I go into the index and stocks and sectors is this webinar is purely educational in nature. I am not recommending buy or sell of any instruments or asset classes. Uh, we would like to make this one hour webinar as educational as much as possible so that we have a clear understanding of our own. Whether it's right or wrong, it's, it's different, but we have a clear understanding of our own. So let's move ahead. What I do is, first things always, I do a market summary. So right at now, around 1.34 uh, p.m., I'm quickly doing a market summary. You can see here, I can, I can see that these are the scripts which are heavily traded. You see over here, I have top traded. And the first thing that I do is I sort it by percentage change. I always would like to know which are the stocks which are heavily traded today and also gaining. So I say, I can clearly say it's Hoodco, it's Biocon, thanks to the news. The AU uh, Bank, which got uh, listed just uh, on Monday, and Adani. Then I have Hint Petro, CDSL. So I see a couple of new IPOs, um, new listings which have moved. I see Infratel here, over here. I'll definitely come to this talk a little later because we had a trade on this today morning, and I'll tell you uh, the concept of coil. On the other hand, when I you know sort it the other way around, I can see which are the draggers. I can see that MDFC in a range is down around 0.85% followed by ITC, TCS, Axis Bank, Infosys. So, okay, so I can see a little bit of banks, ITC. These are the ones heavy which are dragging the market down. Again, some background noise. I strongly suggest guys, please keep yourself in the mute mode. You wouldn't want me to uh, every time move away from the chart and uh, mute everyone, right? All right, thank you. So. One more thing that I look is the index pullers and draggers. So let's say um, today morning I was not able to track the markets for the first couple of hours. Let's say. And I join around around 1 o'clock or 11 o'clock and I would like to see which are the contributors of, to the index which is dragging. So I see that TCS is, is the biggest contributor on the downside. Well, I can clearly see that TCS moved quite sharply two days and after that come down a little bit. HDFC, IDC, Infosys, HDFC Bank. So these are the draggers. On the other hand, if I just sort it upside down, Hindustan Lever, amazing move, great breakout. This is the pullers. So I can cleanly understand that which are the stocks which is moving the index up and which is moving the index down, number one. Uh, question. Okay. Jaydeep says that no voice. Uh, quickly an audio test. Guys, just type audio OK so that Jadeep can read us, that you can all hear me clean. Just write audio OK. Neil, I'll come to that. That's a daily chart in the background. Audio OK. Thank you, everyone. Thanks a lot. Thank you. That's uh, that. This is a daily chart, Neil, over here. Uh, so quickly going back to that uh, market summary, you know what happens is when I sort it out, I can see that uh, amongst the heavily traded stocks, I don't see any huge name. When I say huge name, I don't see any top 10 uh, nifty 50 stocks that's coming up. Hindustan Lever coming up over here around uh, in the rank of seven or eight. However, when I sort the losers, 
right? Uh, within the heavy heavily tra tra traded stocks, I can see that these are the heavyweights. So I can see that there is some amount of selling uh, evident in the heavyweight stocks, and uh, on the upside, it's more about stock centric. Over here in this market summary, I can also check the best, the ones which have gained the most, or the worst, the new high and the new low. Now, obviously, within the best and worst, you'll get those 20% kind of moves, stocks that you don't track every day. So, obviously, you see the names are not that common. Uh, worst also would be similar case where, you know, the, the names will not be that common that we trade or we hear about every day. New high is a new 52-week high. So, again, Hutko is there because it's newly listed. Don't see much. Huh? PTC is definitely an amazing move today. This is the daily chart of PTC. Exceptional volumes over a crore. Uh, if you see my volumes um, chart over here, these histograms are volumes in gray. And what I have in red over here is a 21 period simple moving average of the volumes. Simple 21 means I am plotting what is the rolling uh, monthly rolling volume. So PTC on an average for 21 days, uh, the volumes are around 19 lakh shares. And today it's 1.12, so uh, over a crore. So exceptional move from PTC, we are in new highs. The new lows will give us stocks which are at a 52 week low, all time and all time low. So around what say, three minutes and we've got a good understanding of the market. Okay, one minute. There are people who's trying to join us, but we've got a houseful guys, congratulations and thank you. Many people are trying to join us, but the platform is just showing me that sorry, they can't be joined. So going back, three, four minutes, I get an understanding of where we stand right now. I can say that the markets are, are dragging by a few heavyweights like HDFC, HDFC Bank and ITC. On the upside, it's the Hutco Biocon, which is reacting. CDSL, Hutco are the new IPO stocks which are moving up. So far, so good. I can now quickly go up and let's say open a price watch. Okay. I come over here. And I generally trade the NSE FNO space. So I quickly open the price watch. This is a watch where we are going to track prices. Okay. So I open this. I want to see the percentage change. So I drag it to my left hand side. I reduce this a bit. And I sort it. And I can see that within the FNO space, around 223 stocks and indices which make up the universe, are uh, the ones which are actually going up significantly. Now, the difference between what we did first and what we're doing now is, in the first case, it will show you the heavily traded one. You remember we saw the to heavily traded one. In this case, we're seeing the entire universe. Similarly, I can quickly see that, okay, Ajanta Pharma is breaking down, NIT Tech come off, InfiBeam fails to hold on. Okay, so I, I've got an understanding of where things lie right now. Now, moving ahead, I would like to see which are the sectors which is moving. So I come over here, all indices, all indices under National Stock Exchange. So I open it up and again, I sort it out and I see VIX, which is a, a fear indicator, which is a sentiment indicator the way I see it. Uh, it's called the fear indicator is essentially going up. Now, India VIX going up, guys, I'm sure you know, uh, is inversely correlated to that of the Nifty. Uh, VIX going up is a sign that the Nifty can come down. So let's see how have VIX been of late. So we don't need a bar chart or a candlestick chart for VIX. A line chart is fine. And this is the daily VIX chart with all my parameters and indicators. I'll come to those later. And I can see that, okay, this is my entire history of VIX. Let me go to the weekly. Okay, this is the weekly chart of India VIX. And I can see that this was 2009, right? And this was around 2010 August, where it bottomed around the levels of 16 and 17. Broke down. This breaking down, guys, means the markets are going up, right? So we see that the VIX around 11 is at an all-time low. Obviously, that reciprocates to the Nifty being at an all-time high. So... VIX shooting up, as we can see today, just up by a few percentages, is just an early sign of some degree of fear coming in. Too early to say. Uh, after that, I can see some bit of movement in the energy stocks. The public sector enterprises are also moving, going back to the candles. 
Um, the mid caps are all right. What about the losers? Which are the losers? IT, all right. So IT is the one which is, okay, it's not that bad. So can I click quickly go to the IT universe? I open the constituents of Nifty IT. There you go. And I can sort it again and find out who are the ones which is dragging it. So I find KPIT, TCS, Mindtree are the ones which are dragging it. Uh, Oracle is holding well. Uh, just dial, let's skip that card analytics. So like this, I can get an understanding which are the sectors which are panning out right now. And if I find any sector inter interesting, let's say energy looks interesting, close to a, uh, a person. Again, guys, please keep yourself in the mute mode. Thank you. I'll take up all your questions. Uh, which platform you are using, Narendra? I'm using the Spider Iris Plus software, right? Okay. Now, <clears throat> going back. So, while sorting the uh, sectors, I figured out that energy looks good. Yeah, it's uh, close to a percent and a half up. So, what I can do is I can come over here and I can look closely into the I can quickly look into the energy sector, so Nifty Energy. And I can see which are the ones which are moving up. In Petrobras. Gas Authority of India gives a move. On the downside, there's no energy stocks which is negative today. Tata Power the least which is just flat, followed by NTPC and Reliance Infra. You should notice, guys, that this you see this uh, huge freakish kind of trades for NTPC at the top, uh, Tata Power at the top, and all this. These things, these things happened on Monday morning. We had an exceptional day on Monday, as you will all know. The uh, uh, the data not updating, some technical glitch at National Stock Exchange. So when it opened finally, it created a lot of uh, issues for uh, technical traders like us because the charts have got distorted. So what I am doing personally, I'm fixing them. You know how I fix them? Would you like to see how I fix these charts which are freakish in nature? Yes, I know there's a little bit of disturbance at the background, so I'm requesting everyone to stay in the mute mode, please. Thank you. So what I do is I personally fix them. This is not a true picture of, uh, of Tata Power on Monday's high. It, it was not a price where a lot of trading happened. It's not a true picture. What it does it does um, uh, damage calculation of few of my indicators, right? So what I do is I quickly compare this Tata Power daily chart with Tata Power daily chart in the Bombay Stock Exchange. Look, this is the Bombay Stock Exchange chart and this is the National Stock Exchange chart. The software that I'm using is live on NSE, so I'm not live on BSE. So you will notice when I go to the Bombay Stock Exchange chart, this one, I have only data till yesterday. I, I'm not getting live data for BAC. This is Monday's data. This is Monday's Tata Power on Bombay Stock Exchange. And I see over here that the high is 83.65. So what I can do is I can come over here and do a quote entry. I'll quickly show you how to do that. Tata Power code is 3426. So I'll come over here, do a quote in, entry. I'll say N 3426. So Tata Power, it was the 10th of July. And you see over here, it says 89.05, 89.05, right? So all that we can do is manually feed it. And I think the high, uh, we got it, what, 83.65? I'll just quickly check again. So let's say I save. Once I save this and it's done, let's say when I come back to Tata Power chart, see it's sorted. This is the National Stock Exchange Tata Power chart and this is Monday and I have fixed it. This is manually, high is 83.65, yeah. So what I have done is I just hard coded it, manually fixed my spike so that my indicators are okay now. This is something that we need to do, chartists need to do when they are freakish moves like these, they actually distort our understanding and calculations. Okay. So, a couple of questions. Okay, if you, I'll, uh, I'll request not to use offensive language, please. Thank you. 
Okay. Okay, I said I'm using Iris. All right. Audio should be okay, guys. Please make sure that your internet bandwidth is as much free as possible. Mm, okay, Neil, I would like to do the same in my software. Uh, Neil, it depends on which software are you using, but most of the softwares will allow you to do that. Uh, Ravi is asking, are a caller Infratel? So what criteria you looked at? Okay, I'll start with that and take up your individual questions for sure. For that, I need to um, quickly show you what is a coil. Okay, I need to quickly show you, uh, make you understand the concept of a coil. So I'll just quickly sketch something for you here, right? So what I saw in Infratel was a very interesting concept. Um, I'll share them step by step to you. So the first and foremost thing that I always look in a stock is the trend, always. The most important thing is the trend. There are two, two uh, uh, aspects of the trend that I closely watch. One is the direction of the trend, right? And then the order of the trend. I'll make you understand both of these concepts. What is the direction? What can be the two directions of the trend? The two directions of the trend can be up or it can be down. And the two order of the trend should be a strong order or let's say a no order. So what do I mean by this? Probably you are quite okay with uptrend and downtrend and probably you're doubting now what is an order. So let me take you to my charts. You can play, pay a little bit attention over here with me. You notice that I will go to Infratel and you notice that I have three moving averages plotted on my chart. Now moving averages is something which I like completely swear by. It's, it's something that gives a very good structure uh, to the entire charts okay the three moving averages that I personally always plot in all my time frames is that of the 13 21 34 I've just picked them up from the Fibonacci number series there's no secret in it just make sure that plot three or more and make sure that the multiple is same means let's say if you plot 10 day moving average and the next is 20 that is a multiple of two make sure the next one is 40 and the next one is 80 okay just 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 maintain the symmetry. So what I have done is I've picked up 31, 21, uh, 13, 21 and 34 which is out of the Fibonacci number series and it is 1.618 factor which is completely okay. Now how do I use this for order and direction? Okay. So come over here for Infratel. Let's say we come over here. So when I find that prices have moved above my 34 which is the longest of the three when it has moved above my 34 I say that it's in an uptrend. Again, when it slips below the 34, I say it's in a downtrend. That's for the direction sake, number one. Then what is the order? Well, the order is when uh, the, let's say the 13, the 21, and the 34. So this is the 34 exponential moving average. This is the 21 exponential moving average and this is the 13 exponential moving average. So when I see an order like this where 13 is above 21 and 21 is above 34, so essentially 13 greater than 21 greater than 34, this essentially reflects to a strong positive order. And trust me, when you have a strong positive order, it's a sign of a very strong trend. You would have guessed by now that what would be a strong negative order. Strong negative order would be over here when you have something like this. Oops, did I got it upside down? Yeah. <coughs> 21. So essentially the strong order on the downside is when the 13 is less than that of 21 is less than that of 34. This reflects to a phase of the market which is in a strong negative order. Now look at any charts. Look at any charts. Say for example Infratel. Infratel moved into an uptrend over here close to that March 2017. Big breakout from this zone. And after that notice that most of the time it has maintained the order 
probably come very close to it and picks up the order. So I generally pick up any stock on the long side where it's a positive order. I generally not try to short any candidate which is in a positive order. I generally try to short anything. Let's say you look at Arcom and notice how Arcom has been. Arcom had slipped below the 34 over here. This is the 12th of uh, April 2017. Since then it has been in a downtrend and only recently on Monday did it go above. So from April to almost early July, it was in a downtrend, number one. And then the order started from here. So for me as a trader, I will be approaching Arcom only from a short side. So every time it bounces back, I would be looking to sell it. Every time it bounces back, I will be looking to sell the stock. So this, this is a very basic thing that I use, but something that is extremely useful. And I suggest that, you know, if you're using, if you're using, uh, make sure that you use some kind of moving averages. Okay. Um, let me take uh, Ravi. I'll show you the call now. I'll finish Ravi's question. So what I saw in um, Infratel today morning was quite interesting. Um, I saw a pattern which we call the coil. The coil is essentially looks like this. It's, we call it the coil. Where we generally see that prices oscillate within a range and it makes lower highs and higher lows. When it makes higher lows, this is a sign of bullishness. However, when it makes lower highs, it's a sign of bearishness. So it is essentially contracting. It's going into a very tight range. It's called a coil. And whenever it comes out of a coil, it generally never looks back. It just shoots up. So very good from a short term trading point of view. Which way will it break out? Depends on what was the earlier trend. If the earlier trend was up, there is a high possibility of an up move. So now I take you to the chart of Infratel. Now Infratel had a positive order in the daily chart. Note over here, this is a daily chart. And when I drill down to the short term charts, you notice over here, before the move, come over here. If you come over here, you can see that I more or less have a decent coil shaping up. So I'm drawing some basic trend lines. So I can see that there's some kind of a coil shaping up. This is a 15 minute chart, 1 5, 15 minute chart. I can change it a little higher. I take it to the 30 minute chart. I see the coil shaping up over here. That's all right. That's good. I also see that when I come to the intraday charts, there is the same order of moving averages, which I also see in the daily chart. So the bias is for an upside breakout. So the bias is always on an upside breakout. When I close in to the recent, just I just remove the candle of today. Let me try and do that. Yeah, this is Tuesday. When I look at the last four candles, I can clearly see that it is facing resistances over here at 414, 415. The order is intact. It's going inside a coil. All that it needs to do is break above 414, 415. And that's exactly what happened to the intraday. And when it breaks out of a coil, as I had told you some time back, it never looks back. It just gives you an exponential move. So Ravi, this was what I had seen. The coil with the order and it fits, fits well, really well for any kind of symmetric breakout trade. Okay. I see some audio issues today. Um, should not be guys. Um, yeah, logging out and logging in would be good. I also strongly suggest that keep your bandwidth as uh, low as possible. You know, if you're just for this, uh, for during the webinar, you can keep your other, uh, that is like tab and phone. I'll do that same for my end also, so that from my end the internet is as much free as possible. Yeah, done. Okay. Questions. Let's take some questions. 
Subhajit is asking, is this the same as pennant? Uh, yes, pennants generally happen in the short term, symmetric triangle slightly on the long term, but the concept and the idea is the same, Subhajit. Good question. Rajiv can hear me? Great. Now audio okay. All right, Himant. What about Amtec Auto? Let's, took, let's look at Amtec Auto. So, what do I have? Be before I go to Amtec Auto, what do I have on my plate? I have the candlesticks. I have my trend and my order. I have the volumes alongside. To understand whether volumes are high or low, I have average volumes. Cool. For momentum, I have a couple of indicators. I use the RSI 2 period, which is a very short term one. I have a swing strategy based on that. I use the Stochastics 4. Again, um, a swing strategy is based on Stochastics 4. CCI 20 acts as a good uh, uh, momentum indicator. And to understand the volatility, the range, I use ATR, average to range. With this in mind, with this in plate, let's go to Amtec. Now this is the daily chart of Amtec. So let me quickly check who asked the question. Uh, Jayanajit, okay, I, I hope I've pronounced your name right. So Jayanajit, Let's go to Amtec Auto. This is the daily chart. Now, as you can see, whatever little I have explained to you some time back, can we say that the trend is down? Yes. Does it have an order? Yes. And the order is negative. So our bias is created. The bias is that of negative. Now, will it fall or rise or consolidate? Let's, let's take one step at a time. When I come to volumes, what do I see? When Amtec crashed, literally crashed from 33 down to 21 in just three days, this was a kind of volumes that Amtec uh, actually happened in Amtec. After that, we notice that the volumes have completely dried down. Look at the average and what is happening now. So not much interest. Short term indicators obviously have gone oversold. And if I zoom in a little bit, all right, that's my laptop giving me update of the time. Thank you, Siri. So when I zoom in into the chart a little bit, I notice, notice where I've kept my cursor around the 32, 32 and a half mark. This was the previous highs and this was the previous lows also over here. And when, when, when did we see the sharp breakdown? When it broke 33. So 32 and 33, so I can mark this. So support and resistance line. I can quickly mark this zone. Say like this. This is an important zone. Look how well it acted as support before. As and when I add more data for Amtec, look how brilliant 32, 33 was. Back there in 2016, this is November 2016. This is December 2016. Again in Jan 2017, March, April 2017. So this is a very important zone, 32-33. The bounce back took us to 32-33 and now it's coming down. So bottom line, weak trend, strong order on the downside, bias is on the downside. As long as 32-33 is not taken out on the upside, Amtec Auto is not the best of stocks to look into. Whenever we finish any kind of conclusion, I always suggest that you always take a look at the higher time frame. So from the daily chart, I quickly go to my weekly chart and I see over here that the Amtec Auto is completely range bound, completely underperformed. All right. That's how we reach charts step by step. All right, Rajiv, I'll quickly, yes, I'll quickly check ITC, Adani, Okay, I'll do Adani and IDC as well. Okay. Okay, guys, I'll just request one thing. When I ask for questions, then please type what's happening is you're flooding the chat box with so many questions. I, it's, I have to drag all the way up to find where was the last question. Okay, let's take one by one. We'll learn from all our questions. 
So let me first quickly revise what was order because Rajiv couldn't hear us. Um, so Rajiv, for you, let me just show you. Yes, let me just show you the order. So I am using three moving averages over here. I'm using the 13, 21, and 34. My short term is 13, medium term is 21, and long term is 34. A strong positive order is when 13 is above 21 and 21 is above 34. This is a strong order on the upside. On the other side, if 13 is below 21 and 21 is below 34, this is a strong order on the downside. So whenever we look into any chart, whenever I personally look up any chart of any time frame, the first and foremost thing that I will check is what is the trend, what is the direction of the trend, and is there any order or not? Many a times we might find that 13, 21, or 34 are all you know intermingled, and there is no order. When there is no order, it always is better that you wait for the order to shape up. And when there is no order, it also gives rise to a new order. And that new order can be up or down. So there is a trading opportunity. Here, I will just quickly show you how I figure out some nice breakout candidates. Look over here. I come to the software and this you can do in any software. I'm just using Iris Plus because you know I'm very comfortable. I've been using it for some time. So I come to this scanner. It's a scanner. Uh, which I'm going to tell the scanner to do something for me. What am I going to ask it? So I go to the average, the short term, medium term and long term. And I give the parameters E13, E21 and E34. And let's say I ask to scan it in the daily time frame. And I can give it a condition. What I'm telling him is give me those stocks which is cutting 21 and 34. The 13 is cutting 21 and 34 at the same time. Let me quickly uh, draw to explain this. What I am asking the software to do is let's say, let's say this is 21 and let's say this is 30, let's say this is 34. So what I'm asking the software to do is give me those stocks where the 13 is cutting both 21 and 34 at the same time either on the upward or on the downward that's what I'm asking the software to do so let's see today what does it give us the markets are yet it has around uh, 90 minutes more so I ask look over here daily average E13 E21 E34 average 1 that is 13 cutting average 2 and average 3 upward I'm going to select it. I generally stick to the FNO space. So I come over here, go to the FNO space, and uh, I go to condition and I say run. As I said, 2, 2, 2, 20, 2, 23 stocks, considering the stocks and the indices, it's going to take 4, 5 seconds to scan it for us, and it's going to give us Borja Paint and NCC. Look at Borja Paint. When we zoom in, you see that today the 13 has cut both the averages on at one shot. This is the beginning of a new order. This is where you chase breakout trades. Essentially, whenever you get this, guys, the stock has already moved. The new order has started. This is just the beginning of a new order. NCC has already moved around close to 6%. Look how close they are. Right? So when you do this, you get uh, stocks which are in a breakout mode. Now I'll just explain another concept I very well uh, you know completely swear by is that whenever the three moving averages come very close to each other look over here NCC look over here NCC look over here NCC or any other chart whatsoever whenever they come very very close to each other like this you know for sure that there is going to be a big move coming up 100% Okay, we can go back in the past history of NCC and we can see that whenever averages comes close to each other, it gives rise to a big move. So keep a watch. Let's quickly extend this concept and figure out, can I find stocks which are probably opening up on the downside? 
So 13, 21, and 34 on the daily. And let's say a downward cut. Do we get any stocks here? No. Within the FNO space, we don't get any because it, we are in a strong uh, uptrending market. So can I increase the universe? Let's say 500. I'll finish this and take away, take the questions. I'll just show you if there are any stocks which is opening up an order on the downside. Okay, no. So that's a sign of a bull market. There's none opening on the downside. Okay, questions. Please explain more about the Alphabet's premium service. Angad, okay, I'll do that towards the end. The last few five minutes, I'll definitely do that. Let me, um, Auto Pharma will look into it, sir. Uh, Rima is asking, I also want to join the QMT. Please tell me something about that. Okay, I'll quickly do that right away. Uh, Rima QMT, Qualified Market Trader, is a program which I take uh, online 100%. The very first batch is will be concluding this this weekend. It's a weekend program. I'll just quickly write it down so that it's easier for you. Uh, the QMT program. So we will be starting off batch two, which is already fast filling on September second. September second, two thousand seventeen. Classes are on Saturdays and Sundays. Saturday from four to six p.m. And from Sunday, Sundays are 10 to 12 noon. It's a two hour class. All the classes are recorded and they will be shared with you on a private YouTube channel where only you can see it. Uh, we will take the Iris Plus software, which I'm showing in front of you right now. We will get it free for a period of 20 days. So whatever strategies we learn, the concepts that I'm showing you, Rima over here, I will be hand holding them on the QMT program. I'll ask you to code them like I did in the scanner right now. Uh, we are all part of a WhatsApp group. Uh, the QMT, when the, when the QMT program goes on, we share all our understandings, doubts over there. I answer them personally. And once the program is over, we go to a FB private group where we post charts, ideas, books, concepts. That's that's QMT Rima and because I'm explaining the QMT, I'll just, uh, okay, for any doubts about QMT, you can reach me. I, for more, uh, I have a brochure which I can email you. You can email me at alpha.paul at gmail.com. You can email me on my uh, support at the rate 10x bootcamp. North Asia. This is our vertical of trainings and workshops. This is my personal email ID. I'll drop in all the details of the upcoming QMT. Right? Uh, quickly, I'll take two more minutes and I'll talk about uh, Alphabet Premium. Someone was asking me. The Alphabet Alphabets Premium is essentially a Telegram group where we share one to three ideas every day. Those are all intraday ideas. I'll show you what were today's ideas. Definitely Infratel was one of them. I was also keeping a close watch on Maruti. Now Maruti did not trigger. I will probably keep it yesterday as well. See, this is what bad freak trades does to our chart. See how badly my 15 minute chart is, you know, literally screwed up. So this is a one minute chart or a five minute chart of Maruti. Maruti is something we're keeping a close watch on. It did not get triggered. So I shared three trades today out of which Maruti was one and Infratel was the other. We got, we did only one trade, which was that of Infratel. We made a pretty decent move in that and we are out. So for premium, uh, for alphabets, it's only one to three trades every day. It's not that we do all the three trades. Days go when we don't even do any one or so, or days go when we do all three. Purely intraday. We have a premium telegram channel where each and every step of each and every trade is updated real time where to exit, where to enter. Once you join it, you'll get a four or five pager PDF uh, written by me, which, talk, which talks about the system, the rules that you should follow, and as well as money management. So I will essentially hand holding you to do each and every trade. Try not to break the rules. I also do some degree of counseling. If you have any kind of doubts in terms of how you're trading, your trading is not shaping up good or bad, you can do some degree of counseling with me as well. Okay. Um, is that good? 
it was Rima's question on QMT and I forgot whose question was that for uh, Alphabet. Now just hold on, please don't type any questions, just give me two minutes, please, thank you. Yes, Maruti was the other one I showed you, VGAR was the other, I'll show you, it's not got triggered, I think it's got negated, I'll show you that one as well. Is there any conceptual questions? Okay, I did this. What do you see for long term? Guys, please don't post any questions. Thank you. Uh, when I tell you, when I ask you, please do that because I'm losing track of the questions. You're asking too many questions. Thank you. What to see for long term investment in stocks 10 to 15 years because we have no fundamental news. Abhi, that's a good question. Uh, I do not follow fundamentals at all. Uh, there's a very good reason why I don't follow fundamentals. I don't understand fundamentals. Okay. So what do I do? Uh, I, I, as I said, I'm a big follower of, big believer of um, moving averages, okay? So what I do is I plot a very uh, simple, I plot a long-term moving average and I like the E89 or E108, either of them is fine. So E89, uh, okay? Exponential 89. And I just plot it on my daily, on my monthly or the quarterly charts. So this is my monthly chart. Now simple, this is, this is the simplicity that I stick by. If a stock in the monthly chart is above its E89 or E100 or E108, does not matter. There's no secret in E89, but just it's the, it has to be a long-term average. If it's above the long-term average, it should be fundamentally fine. This is the chart of HDFC Bank monthly. Look at how well it is holding above the E89 monthly. The month when it went above E89 was back in 12. December 1996 and since then not a single month has it ever come down below this average. So I say HDFC Bank is fundamentally sound. I also say that if the fundamentals start to deteriorate, if the company goes downward, then the price will reflect that and price will come down below 89 and I will not touch them. Arcom broke E89 monthly in the month of September 2008. This was the 2008 bear market. Please note, since then, it has never ever managed to go above the E89 on the monthly time frame. So I, who does not understand fundamentals, will say that there must be something wrong with the company. If there's something good with the company and everything is going good, the price will reflect it and the price will go above the average. So this is a simple rule that I follow. Right? Look at Suzlon. It went below the same time, September 2008. It has never managed to go above that. So my answer to your question for a long term fundamentals, I quickly check are the monthly charts clean or not. Right? Okay. That's right. That's right, Ankit. Yes. No. Yeah. Fundamentals are very important, but you should know them. Okay. Without understanding them, you should not. So I don't understand. I don't even intend to go there. So I just use something which I understand. I noticed a trend in the performance sheet of yours and wanted to discuss with you. Angad, uh, if you must be talking about uh, Alphabet Premium, uh, I'll suggest you drop me an email about uh, this and I'll... Uh, Definitely answer each and every doubt of yours. Tara Models. Okay, quickly, Tara Models. So, Tara Models, let's do a top-down approach. Tara Models, monthly chart, E89 holding above. Look when it went above. It went above August 2009. And since then, Tara Models have been doing good. So, straight away come to the daily chart. I see that three days back, it went above my 34 exponential moving average. So the direction is up, but there is the order is negative. You see the order is still negative. This one is 13, this one is 21, this one. So it is in an uptrend with a negative order. That's not a very uh, positive or a very negative sign. It's actually not a very good sign. So I will wait for Tata Motors to come into some kind of order. Okay. Once and once we have an order in place, that's where we can do some kind of swing trades. Also, what it can do is if, if Tata Motors, let's say goes up over here, 465, 470 resistance all the time. 
if it consolidates a bit make some small candles what will happen these three moving averages will start to come close to each other and then one day will come if prices have to improve one day will come when the 13 will cut the 21 and 34 so my scanner will capture that a new order is taking place right so as of now tata models i'll stay away itc brilliant chart look when itc when the monthly chart went above the e89 april 2003 look at the outperformance so fundamentally strong stock has to be let's come to the daily chart wonderful trend beautiful order whenever i have a chart like this my eyes widen up and i look for swing trades i don't know how many of you know the swing trading concept what i do is i look for an uptrend a pullback it's it's correcting down it comes close to these three moving averages my indicators go oversold the candles go short and I then expect a move on the upside. This is a daily chart. Let me quickly drill down to the 15 minute chart or the 5 minute chart because of those candles. Yeah. So I come to the 5 minute chart and I see that a new order is taking shape. So IDC is definitely on my radar for a quick buy on the upside. It is not confirmed yet but definitely in the watch list. Nitish is asking can you take 5 minutes to describe your rule here for Alphabet's premium? Uh, yes, Nifty View and Alphabets Premium. So what I do, guys, I can quickly show you. This is what I do every night or every day early morning. The first thing, okay, the first thing that I do for Alphabets Premium is scan number one. Scan number one, I scan the entire FNO universe and I scan for which are the uptrending stocks and which are the downtrending stocks. The, upper, uh, the uptrending stocks take up one group, a separate group. The downtrending stocks make a separate group, the downtrending group. When you come over here, you will notice that I can show you that as per my yesterday scan, this was my uptrending stocks. This is what I got yesterday. After yesterday's close, this was my uptrending stocks. And... Uh, this was my downtrending stocks. So I have two buckets. These are all positive stocks. These are all negative stocks. When I say positive and negative in terms of the trend, say for example, I have BP sale is going up, but it's in a negative trend as per yesterday's. The order is also negative, right? So I have two buckets. Once I have two buckets, then I go to scan number two. Scan number two will be looking for, let's say, short ideas. If it's looking for short ideas, it will scan four to six different systems or I will say strategies. And these strategies will be scanned only in the down trending group. Similarly, once these six strategies are over, I get some short ideas. I go to scan number three for long ideas. Again, four to six different strategies will be scanned and these strategies will only be run in the uptrending group. So let's say I come over here, I come and I clear all, I say load. When I load, you will notice that I have, and, and I keep on working on them. So I've got Alphabet's premium long strategies. I've got some long strategies over here. And I come over here and I say, go to the user defined group, go to the uptrending stocks and uh, run. So there we go. I've got a pro I've got a system called the washout and RSI 2, I got a swing strategy, then I've got inside candle. So it's going to give me a few ideas. All that I'm going to do as a trader investor or an advisor is I'm going to personally scan them, eyeball them and figure out which are the best ones for tomorrow. This is how I pick up Alphabet's premium trades. Thank you, Saurav. Is this clear how I pick up the Alphabet's trades? Uh, Nitish, right? Uh, okay. Okay, Saurav, okay, done. How to relate spot price with future price for your Alphabet's trade? Okay, I, uh, Vilas, I have a full uh, PDF written down where all the rules are slated. Drop me an email, I'll send you that PDF. It will give you all the ideas about um, how you should trade alphabet. If you're there in, the, in our clientele, in our premium group, you would have received the, pre, uh, the PDF. 
If not, just drop me an email. I'll send it to you. Not a problem at all. Okay. Uh, I must have left out few questions. Uh, Bharat Finance looks really good. DLF real estate, yes, something that I am eyeing. It, real estate has done a turnaround pretty good. So Bharat Finance, see the order. See now I have the order. This is where the three averages came close to each other. The monthly chart, it's holding above the E89. So my all my bias is on the upside. I think this is this can turn around to be a pretty good stock. DLF monthly chart is just going above after a very very long time. Something definitely is improving fundamentally in real uh, in real estate or DLF for sure. When I come to the daily chart, beautiful order coming off. If my indicators give me a signal, I will probably get a swing trade. Someone had asked me for ITC as well. Uh, yeah, we did talk about ITC. Sorry for that. Vilas, great. If you're there in my premium list, you would have definitely got an email from me yesterday with a .pdf file. If not, and you should check our Telegram channel, it's there as well. Yeah, 10x, uh, Deepak, 10x bootcamp essentially is one to two day workshops. The last one we took in Delhi, but we've got a very good response for online uh, classes and that's why we are taking QMT now. Uh, we will be working on some offline programs soon. We'll definitely let you know. How do you know when retracement ends in ITC? What would you look for in the indicator for retracement? Uh, yes, so there are a few indicators like momentum and volatility indicators which will suggest us that yes, it has uh, gone into uh, oversold territory and the volatility has come down. m and Finance, right. Yep. So if you've been listening to us since uh, 1.30, you would know, notice that uh, the trend is up. The order is beautiful. So my bias is on the positive. This is the monthly chart. Fundamentally, everything looks to be good. All the issue is it is uh, finding resistance at the 380, 390 zone long term. Looks good for a swing buy. I don't have a signal yet for my signals to come. My immediate short term momentum indicators need to dip down. So uh, a breakout trade would be above 368. A quick dip trade if it comes down, if it comes between these three bands of mine, then probably a swing trade. As of now, m and Finance with a positive bias, wait and watch. If prices dip down close to 353, it's a swing trade, possible swing trade. If it breaks above 368, that's a breakout trade. Wait and watch is a good uh, technique that we should adopt for m and Finance right now. What is the volatility number to see when retracement ends ADX indicator? Well, ADX is a little lag for that, uh, uh, Neil. Um, you know what, I'll, I'll share some, some bits about that. When I look into the volatility, I look into ATR. I see ATR is dropping, which is a good sign, right? And I see short term momentum indicators dipping really down at the oversold zone. Thanks, Vishal. Uh, for long term, whose price rate uh, penny stocks? Now, Abhi, I generally don't like to get into those penny stocks. Um, you know why? Because you see such good quality companies like HDFC, Asian Paints, Century Fly, and so many of them. When you have such good companies doing such good, why would you like to go into penny stocks? I've seen so many people, I know the penny stocks go four times, 10 times, 50 times in a very short span of time, but then do they tend to do the opposite also, right? So I generally don't dig into the penny stocks, trust me. I generally look into the 500 for uh, long-term holding and I look into the FNO for trading. Definitely this is recorded and I'll share with this with everyone on YouTube, on, on YouTube public channel. Uh, Miraj, uh, no classes class. Please join our online class. It will save your time a lot. Uh, I'm a big believer in online sessions. Uh, in Calcutta, we might have a boot camp sometime soon, but uh, nothing's been on the schedule right now. Okay. Um, how can I add myself in the Alpha Telegram group? Uh, Prithu, just drop me an email. I'll send you all the details. And I'll send my details at the end of it as well. 
Uh, Deepak, don't be confused between QMT and 10X Bootcamp. Try and understand Bootcamp is one or two day workshop, little advanced, okay? QMT is a one month, 16 hour program. Uh, depending on your level of understanding of trading and technicals, should you choose? Again, drop me an email, tell, tell me as much as possible about yourself and I'll be able to suggest. Uh, anyways, I'll strongly suggest you should definitely do QMT and Neil, yes, QMT is 100% online. 100% online. We've got this time, we've got people who is joining us from Dubai and uh, I think from UK, right? So you can join from anywhere. So penny stock problem is solved. Yes, email ID, I'll type it out once more. So alpha dot call at the rate gmail.com right you can drop in any doubts over here if you have any questions related to alphabets then uh, drop in at info at alphabets dot today we have a dedicated team who will take care of that any doubts in terms of uh, QMT or training drop in a doubt over here so I have three emails ID which I've given you you want to connect with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can do that on my personal email ID. Any doubts for alphabets, info at alphabets.today and any doubts for QMT, 10 Asia. support at 10 Asia. A Coal India, someone had asked for Coal India. Let me quickly take a look at Coal India. I don't have much time left, just a minute to go. Well, see, Coal India, what do I say? I've laid the foundation at the beginning. Trend down. Look at the order. Negative. It has given a bounce back. This over here is called a divergence. Go to my YouTube channel. You'll find a nice video on divergence. Thanks to this divergence, we have a move like this. Let's look at the monthly chart. The monthly chart is deteriorating. I don't, this is not a very, very good sign. Especially in the market at all-time highs. This is not the kind of stock that I would want to stay, right? So, these kind these of... These kind... I could hear myself. So these kind of structures is always good that you stay away from it a little bit. Give it a time. You know, there are far better stocks in the market to trade in and out. Why get stuck into this? Probably on the contrary, this is a good uh, shot on a rise, you know. So Coal India, I would suggest to stay away from. Yes, volumes do do play a part, Sandeep. Yes, um, Infratel went well. The market played out uh, actually supported us. But yes, as I showed you that a lot of work goes into it, as I showed you that I run multiple scanners to come down to one, two or three. I'm reworking on that. Many times what happens, I get flooded, especially in a strong bull market or bear market. You get a lot of ideas. It's very difficult to pick any one, two or three. So pro probably we'll get a slightly longer list. But uh, yes, continuous work, uh, continuous process goes on in improving our products. Right, 2.30 it is, guys. Um, wonderful. I had a... This one hour went like a jiffy. Um, I thoroughly uh, enjoyed our first uh, live market talks. I hope that did manage to add some value to it. Give me feedbacks. I'll be coming back again after 14 days with another web webinar for sure. Give me feedback so that we can make this one hour as much uh, compact and have maximum impact for you and me as well. I'm recording this. I'm going to share it with everyone on public YouTube. Thanks for joining in. Any doubts, I've given you all the email IDs. You can drop in your queries. As I say always, trade well, trade wise. And if I've missed any doubt of yours, I'm very sorry. Please email me personally. I will make sure I'll reply you. All right. Yes, I can share your my YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, type Abhijit Paul, you'll find me there. I'll quickly show you also. So you can come to my website. This is my website, abhijitpal.com, and over here, down here, you can see the YouTube link. This will take you to my YouTube channel. Do subscribe. It's going to add value to you because every time I post a new video, you will get notified. So this is my YouTube channel. You can stay with me on my social medias as well. Come to my website, abhijitpal.com, and these are the links. Thanks a lot for joining in, everyone. God bless. Trade well, trade wise. Thank you.